we'll continue graphing trig function variations. For now, the horizontal axis is the theta axis. The unadorned equation, y equals sine theta, oscillates up and down around the theta axis, as high as y equals 1 and as low as y equals negative 1. In TR-42, we introduced two parameters that change the vertical characteristics of the graph. The D parameter, called the vertical shift, corresponds to the midline, the horizontal line about which the wave oscillates. The D parameter shifts the entire graph vertically, up or down on the coordinate system. The A parameter stretches or compresses the wave vertically. It's related to the amplitude because the amplitude is the absolute value of parameter A. The A parameter adjusts the graph like this, elongating or compressing it vertically, and even inverting it when the A parameter is negative. Now we're going to introduce the last two parameters, B and C, which are horizontal versions of A and D. The B parameter stretches or compresses the wave horizontally. It's related to the period that we saw in TR-18, but the period isn't B. We'll get to the period shortly. And the C parameter is the horizontal or phase shift, moving the entire graph left or right. This video will focus on the B parameter. We'll get to the C parameter in TR-44. By adjusting these four parameters, we can model any pure oscillating motion. With the D parameter, we set the midline. With the A parameter, we match the amplitude. With the B parameter, we adjust the period. And with the C parameter, we tune the horizontal phase. A and D are the vertical parameters. B and C are the horizontal parameters. When we graph y equals sine theta, the B parameter is 1, the coefficient of the independent variable theta. As we know, the period of y equals sine theta is 2 pi. So let's create a chart. When b is 1, the period is 2 pi. When b is 2, each point for theta on the horizontal axis is plotted with a sine of the angle twice the size of theta. The effect is to compress the graph horizontally by a factor of 2. So when b equals 2, the period equals pi. When b equals 3, the period is 2 pi over 3. And when b equals 4, the period is pi over 2. Going the other way, when b is less than 1, say 0 0.5, the wave is stretched out horizontally. When b equals 0 0.5, the period is 4 pi. And when b equals 0, the equation is y equals sine 0 theta, which is just y equals sine 0, and the sine of 0 is 0. The line doesn't oscillate, so there's no period. These period values don't look like there's a discernible pattern, but when we rewrite them in terms of 2 pi, a very clear pattern emerges. The period of an oscillating wave is 2 pi divided by the B parameter. So now we can quickly summarize our definitions based on the parameters we've covered. The amplitude is the absolute value of the A parameter. The period is 2 pi divided by the B parameter. And the vertical shift is simply the D parameter, also called the midline. Now let's determine the B parameter for various curves by inspecting their graphs. What are the period and B parameters for each curve? Starting with curve A, the distance from peak to peak is the period, which by inspection is 3 pi over 2. Well, we're also asked to find the B parameter and we know that period equals 2 pi over b. So set these terms equal to each other and solve for b. When the period is 3 pi over 2, the b parameter is 4 thirds. For curve b, it looks like the peak to peak distance is pi minus pi over 4. So the period is 3 pi over 4. The period is also 2 pi over b. So solving for b yields 8 thirds. 
So when the period is 3 pi over 4, the B parameter is 8 thirds. For curve C, peak to peak is pi over 4. It looks like half of pi over 2. Period equals 2 pi over B. So set these equal and solve for B. The B parameter is 8. So when the period is pi over 4, the B parameter is 8. For curve D, we don't have a convenient peak-to-peak -peak or trough-to-trough -trough measurement, but we can carefully consider these corresponding points and see that the period is 2 pi. Setting this equal to 2 pi over B yields a B parameter of 1. This makes sense. When the B parameter is 1, we're not compressing or stretching the trig function, so its period is the unadjusted 2 pi. When the period is 2 pi, the B parameter is 1. Now let's draw a sine wave whose B parameter is 1.5. We're not told anything else about the curve, so we can draw whatever we want as long as the B parameter is 1.5. This means the period is 2 pi over 1.5, which is 4 pi over 3. Let's mark out a distance of 4 pi over 3 on our horizontal axis. This will be our peak to peak distance. And let's mark the points we'll use. It doesn't matter the y value. We'll just pick something random or convenient. These will be the peaks or high points of the curve. It might help to draw the curve if we knew the lowest point, which is right between these at 2 pi over 3. We'll just put it here and sketch the curve, whose period is 4 pi over 3. What we covered up till now is perfectly appropriate for a math class. But let's go a little further for the engineering and physics students. When we model oscillating phenomena, the independent variable, the x-axis, isn't radians. It's time, usually in seconds. Here's our general trig equation with theta as the independent variable. And here's the equation as you might see it modeling a physical system with t for time or some other variable representing the independent variable of time. The math doesn't change at all. Now, let's revisit our definition of period. I said it was the horizontal distance between consecutive peaks or troughs. This is still true, but with time as the independent horizontal axis, period is now a period of time, the time it takes to complete one cycle, say from peak to peak. The symbol for period is capital T. Here's a simple problem dressed up to look complicated. The voltage between two points of an electric circuit is described by this equation, where s is in seconds. What's the period of the wave's oscillation, t? t, the period, is 2 pi over b. To solve this problem, all we need is the b parameter, which is 2.44. 2 pi over 2.44 equals 2.6 seconds, rounded to two significant figures, which is all we're given in the problem statement. So t, the period, equals 2.6 seconds. Let's take another look at our parameter summary chart. We can add capital T as a standard symbol for period, and we can introduce a new vocabulary word, frequency, whose standard symbol is lowercase f. Frequency is the reciprocal of period, so b over 2 pi. The period represents a period of time. The frequency represents cycles per second. The period's unit is seconds, and the frequency's unit is hertz, which is naturally the reciprocal of seconds, or 1 divided by seconds. So it might seem like things got more complicated, but amplitude is still the absolute value of parameter a, Parameter b determines both the period and frequency of a wave, since they're reciprocals, and parameter d is still the vertical shift or midline. One more problem, and we'll end this video. What are the amplitude, vertical shift, period, and frequency of the wave described by this equation, where t is in seconds? Graph the curve. Amplitude is the absolute value of a, which is 4. The vertical shift is the d parameter, positive 2. The b parameter is 20. The period is 2 pi over 20, which is 0.31 seconds, rounded to two significant figures. 
and the frequency is 20 over 2 pi, which is 3.2 cycles per second, or 3.2 hertz. Lowercase hz is the abbreviation for hertz. Now let's graph the curve. The midline is 2, the vertical shift. The amplitude is 4, so our curve will oscillate between negative 2 and 6. The A parameter is negative, so our cosine curve will be flipped. I'll plot a point down here to remind us to start the cosine curve with a negative value. Since we're drawing our own coordinate system, meaning one wasn't provided for us, we don't have a horizontal time scale to match, so we can draw the curve to whatever horizontal scale we like and simply label the axis to denote the period. So we draw this curve. The period is 0.31 seconds, so we'll say this distance represents 0.31 seconds. The next troughs must be at 0.62 and 0.93 seconds. We calculated the frequency to be 3.2 cycles per second, so we can count over 3.2 cycles, I'm just kind of estimating, and put our one second mark here, which looks about right. The frequency of 3.2 means 3.2 cycles in one second. In the next video, we'll cover the last parameter, parameter C.